I love you too. But there's a principle in God's word that we can't get away from. Am I right? Hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to talk to you briefly on uh, some things today. I want you to turn in your Bible to Genesis 1, verse 26. Hallelujah. Do you love Jesus? Amen. I said, do you love Jesus? Amen. Do you really, really love Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you what, I've come to a point in my life, I love him no matter what. I don't love him for what he can give me. I don't love him for anything that he can, you know, bestow upon me. I love him because of who he is. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And then it says, and all of these things shall be added. In other words, brothers and sisters, God wants you to get so in tune with the word of God and so in tune with God's presence that as you run after it, everything you desire will run after you. And that's the way it ought to be with a Christian. That you run after God and seek His kingdom. And all the things that you desire in your life will run after you. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Come read with me. 1, 2, 3, go. And God said, let us make man after our likeness. And let them have dominion. And over the fowl of the year. So God created man in his own image. So God is a spirit, right? In this verse of scripture, we've established that, that the, the Lord is a spirit. And the Bible says he was moving, hovering upon the waters. God is a spirit. Yes. Brothers and sisters, when he created man, he created man to be another spirit. Yes. So we can say it like this, that man is another speaking spirit. Yes. Speaking spirit. Yes. Now, understand God said in this verse of scripture, he says man must have what over the earth? Dominion, Dominion over the earth. It means that he doesn't want you to be a servant. He doesn't want you to be a slave, buffeted by circumstances. God wants us to have dominion over every circumstance in life. Every challenge, every mountain that faces you, God wants you to have dominion. Why and how? God wants you to have dominion because he made you in his image and likeness. And you know, when God shows up, He doesn't make an apology for nobody. And now that you're born again, and when you show up, another speaking spirit, you don't have to make an apology for nobody or to anybody. Demons must recognize you. Demons must know you. When a sick demonic spirit, a spirit of infirmity that's plaguing someone and it's living in their body, when you show up, it must recognize that there's something in this man, <laughs> something in this woman I've got to check out. Are you listening to me? When sickness is in somebody, they must know who you are. You must know who you are. Amen. Listen to this. They won't know who you are until you know who you are. That's loaded. That's loaded. They won't know who you are until you know who you are. So in other words, spirits have intelligence, right? Demon spirits have intelligence. They understand, they know, they perceive things. Brothers and sisters, when you show up, and if you know that you are the righteousness of God, made in the image and likeness of God, they know it too. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Let me give you the definition of dominion. If you can get a hold of this, you must get a hold of this and let it sink in your spirit. The definition of dominion is this. To be given dominion means to be established 
as a sovereign kingly ruler, master, governor, responsible for reigning over a designated territory with the intent or with the inherent authority to represent and embody as a symbol the territory, resource, and all that constitutes that kingdom. Wow. Wow. And I give it to you again. Yes, I know some of you have been yes. trying to write it, but you weren't able to. Let me say it again. So dominion means to be given, to be given dominion means to be established as a sovereign kingly ruler. Brothers and sisters, you know what the Holy Ghost just told me? You know why some of the Christians are suffering? You know why some of the Christians are battling? You know why some of the Christians don't get results they want, you know, don't get the intended results that they want? They just don't know who they are. Yes, that's, it. that's all it needs. If you just come to know who you are, then no one else can give you another identity. You can never be given a foreign identity if you know who you are. Come on, talk to me. If you get to the airport and they say you Taiwanese, you say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm South African. No, you look Japanese. Say, are you blind? Can't you see I'm South African? I'm telling you who I am. See, if you don't know who you are, you will allow the devil and people to tell you who you are not. Don't let people give you an identity. Don't let other people tell you who you are. Find out who you are from the Word of God. We are what we are by the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, listen. If you are born, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter, we are born not of corruptible seed, but the incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. The Bible tells us it's the Word that liveth and abideth forever. Now, then he goes on to say, You are not born of the will of man or by flesh and blood. But you are born by the word of God, which is eternal. Now, if you are born of the word of God, how can we be sustained by man? The only person you can be sustained by is by the word. That's why Matthew says, man shall not live by bread alone. The fourth chapter, verse 4 Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's what you say. I am a new creature. You have the ability of God. That's what you say. I have the ability of God. Are you listening to me? Now some of you are getting bored. I'll tell you why. You're getting bored because you had too much to eat last night. And you're getting bored because you think you know too much. Now, a person that knows too much knows nothing. How can you get tired of the Word of God? I can read a scripture 500 times and still get excited about it. So you say to me, but pastor, that's why I can get the results. Are you listening to me? How can you sit in church and yawn? Talk to me. You sit in a wedding, tearing and all glued and... I watch some of you sitting at the wedding. That's why you can't get the results you want to get. Because carnality seeped into the church. We get moved by the world's system of doing things. We listen to things, we listen to actors, and we listen to performers. We get moved by that. We look at the world, we get intrigued. The Bible says in the last days, even God's elect shall be quiet. Because they will, they will, they will interpret things through carnality, not by the word of God. You cannot sit in church and yawn. Listen to what I'm saying. You cannot sit in church and yawn. You cannot sit at church and go to sleep. 
That means you've come with the wrong spirit. I'm telling you, a child of God need to come to church and say, Pastor, give us a word. I want that word. I want something. I've got to go back out there Monday to Friday. I've got to live out there. I've got circumstances buffeting me. I've got a husband that's not saved. I've got a boss that swears and acts bad. And I've got to put up with that all week long. I've got a business and I don't know how I'm going to get the money to pay the bills. I've got a salary bill. I've got contracts facing me. I've got issues facing me. I've got children that are wayward. I have a miracle and I need to rot a miracle in my life. I need one. I need the word. That's the only thing that will change you. And when you stand and preach and then you get a response like, oh, I heard that one before. You missed it. You might as well retire. I promise you, make a concrete hole somewhere, bury yourself. You're ready for the resurrection. God will never be able to use you because you think you know too much. Then you try to listen to me preach. Then you say, well, I'm wondering whether, Pastor, because you saw a TV program in the week, right? Now, I had this here. People come up to me all the time. They say, well, are you preaching so-and-so's message? Well, I don't have time to watch TV. I don't even watch my own TV programs on TV. I don't, you know, just now and again I would watch, but I listen to a lot of tapes. But the issue is that I am not bemazzled by every Tom, Dick, and Harry. I get these things out of the Word by myself. I've been walking this walk for a long time. I'm not a novice in the faith. I've been serving God for 24 years. I've listened to Kenneth Copeland when he was still young in his ministry. I listened to Kenneth Hagin long, many years back. I've listened to all of these great men of God many years back. I've got some of their tapes dating back 20 years. I've lived this thing. I'm walking proof of this thing. I've made it work in my life. Now you watch TV, you come to church and say, oh, okay, I heard that before. Okay. Shall we go home now? Then your husband turns around, what's for food, for lunch? Biryani. <laughs> Those potatoes will kill you. <laughs> and man shall live by potatoes. <laughs> no. Are you, be hungry for the word of God. I understand how Jesus must have felt talking to the Jews. Must have stood there trying to give them the words of eternal life. He says, I'm from above, not from beneath. He says, I've come to my own. But they, they are refusing to hear me. Uh, uh, you know, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, they had in their midst a great prophet, a man yes, of God. Yes. But they failed to recognize That's it. Right. The Bible says that Jesus of Nazareth walked in his town. Yes. He says he could do no miracle there. Because uh -huh. the people said, ah, oh, Joseph's son, the carpenter. Uh -huh. It's like how you talk of me. Ah, Roshan, I know this man. Yes. Just up the street. Oh, no. Don't worry about him. No. Hey, God raised this guy. Yes. God's anointed this guy. Yes. I'm telling you, church, if you don't get excited and make a demand and appreciate your man of God, soon he'll be gone. I'm telling you. It's the truth. I'm not trying to emotionally work you out. I, say, I said to Mark, I said, Mark, the next church I plant, that thing is going to start to grow by the thousands. Pastor's checking out a year. I'm gone. You say, but pastor, well, you can follow me there if you want to. But I'm telling you, you'll regret the days when you had someone in your midst and you never made a demand. I'm amazed with these new people coming to the Lord, getting healed like that, getting the results like they're getting. And we yawn in church. Don't let me catch you yawning again. If I catch you yawning in church again, I'll make you stand up or I'll send you outside. It's the truth. I make no apology for that. We are not in a normal human institution. We are, we are in the presence of God. We are dealing with eternal things. How can we be so carnal? Hallelujah. You say, pastor's angry. Yeah, I've got a holy anger inside of me. Because I don't play with the things of God. I pray, I fast, I wait before God. I come here. You shouldn't be late. What are you doing at the casino Saturday night? What? Pulling those machines. Then you come here and say, well, 
Pastor, make, do, just say a witchcraft prayer. <laughs> Kachang, I'll get some answer. <laughs> I'm not condemning you. Listen, I'm not a man that minds anyone's business. Do what you have to do. But if you come to my church and you want a result, I want you to get the result. Because yes. I'm interested in you. I don't just fleece you and send you out there not interested in you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Other pastors may do that, but I'm interested in my sheep. I want you to grow in the things of God. I want, you to, you, I want your life to be transformed. Every miracle you want, I want you to get it. And after a while, if I see you still struggling with the same thing, then I get angry. Because it's like saying Jesus is a liar. And He's not a liar. And the word works every time. You know, Jesus said something interesting and he made a remarkable statement. He said it is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than not one tit or bit of my word shall disappear. That means God's word can never fail. So go to bed early on a Saturday. I enjoyed the wedding yesterday. I think the wedding was tremendous. I really enjoyed it. But after I ate, I, you know, I wished I could have stayed longer. But I ran away. Why? I went straight into my office, into the Word. Amen. I've got to do that yes. for me and for the people. I've got to do that. Right. Stay in the we Word. I don't pretend. Yes. I don't come here and put a performance. That's right. So I want you to get hungry for the Word. Yes. Come on. Amen. Do you know why God moves so mightily in the black countries? Yes. All those people love God. Yes. We westernized, we love our steak more than God's word. Yeah, and we love our potatoes and the biryani more than God's word. It's, it's the truth. It is the truth. It's about time the church changed that. It's about time we get radical for God's word. We, we want to be hungry. Blessed are they that thirst and hunger after righteousness, for they shall be full. So don't be full of potatoes. Be full of the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on, talk to me. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. I can, you know, I can miss a meal now. I love my food. And I love good food. But do you know, as of recent, ask my wife, she'll dish for me and I look at it. And I say, no, it's okay. I'm training this flesh yes. that, hey, you say no to this and say yes to the things of the Amen. Spirit. Amen. No more late Saturday nights. Have you... Go late Saturday nights and come here and yawn. I'll knock your head off. <laughs> uh, that's the truth. That's the truth. Okay, coming back to my definition of dominion. <laughs> you still love me? Yes. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we're not playing games. We're not playing games. I'm finished with playing games. We don't play church. We love God, period. You must love God, period. You must be radical about the things of God, period. We don't mess around with holiness. We don't mess around with the things of the world. We are separated unto God. We are ministers of the gospel. And some people think, well, that's just a minister. No, we're special. We carry the presence. You, you know, where's that lady? Come here. You see, come here, come here, come here. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Swazi. See, 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 this lady. Listen, listen. Why? Jesus didn't open the door for her. Aha, uh -huh. got your attention now. Jesus didn't open her door for her. Yet Jesus is Lord. Ah, uh, you're quiet now. I can check that religious mindset. You know who opened the door for her? It was the extension of Jesus' arms. It was Ephesians 4, 11, the ministry gifts, the ascension gifts. Amen. The apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist yes. that opened the door for her. Amen. Are you listening to me? The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20, Believe on the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe in His prophets. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, your prosperity is linked to me. Amen. Are you saying, no, oh, that's being arrogant? No, I know who I am. I know what I'm carrying. I'm carrying the presence of God. Your prosperity is linked to me. How you treat me will determine what you will get. Ah. Oh, 
it passed some of you guys. I'm telling you. Ask Mark. Ask Adrian. He'll tell you, when I go to a man of God, I don't go empty-handed. I'm telling you, I go full. My gift will make room for me. You need to learn that. The definition of dominion. To be given dominion means to be established as a sovereign, kingly, ruler, master, governor, responsible for reigning over a designated territory, with the inherent authority to represent and embody as a symbol the territory, resources, and all that constitutes that kingdom. Brothers and sisters, there's three voices that go out in the world. One is God's voice. God's voice is speaking. The devil is also speaking. His voice is going out. He's speaking too. And then it's the voice of the human spirit. The human spirit is speaking too. You have to discern when it is God's voice. You have to discern when it is a human voice. And you have to discern when it is the devil's voice. You must know that. There are three things the devil respects. Number one, he respects the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He respects the name of Jesus. And he respects the word of God. Amen. That's why, how can you speak the word or prophesy the word unless you know the word? You can only speak and prophesy the word of God if it's in your heart. For out of your abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. There are three persons in the Godhead. The Lord God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. We are redeemed from three things. The title of my message is not three things. The title of my message is the word of my testimony. Amen. There are three things, according to Galatians 3.13, we are redeemed from. Number one. We are redeemed from the curse of poverty. Brothers and sisters, it's not God's will for us to be poor anymore. Poverty is of the devil. Whenever you see idolatry, the thing that's married to idolatry, pagan worship, is poverty. But not to the children of God. The children of God should be experiencing abundance, fullness, wholeness. You say, but pastor, it's not happening yet. Well, do what Brother Nathan said. Just keep on giving, keep on believing, and keep on speaking. Don't give an offering here and go out the door and say, Oh boy, I keep on giving offerings, but nothing is happening. You just blew it with your testimony. You must go out the door and say, I just gave an offering. Lo and behold, I'm expecting a harvest. Are you listening to me? So, you are redeemed from three things. According to Galatians 3.13, you are redeemed from the curse of poverty. You are redeemed from the curse of sickness. Yes. Sickness yes. has no power over Amen. your body. If it should come, you know the method how to make it check out. Yes. Don't entertain it. Right. Oh boy. I was remembering today as I was praying in the morning. I was driving one day in my, from my house down to the church and I had Bell's palsy. I never heard of Bell's palsy. I didn't know palsy got a bell. <laughs> it's the truth. I've been driving down and my whole face went numb. So I went to the doctor and he diagnosed. I mean, the first thing that went through my mind, maybe it's a stroke. You know, it's the first symptom of a stroke. And I went to the doctor and he diagnosed that as Bell's palsy. And then he said to me, he said it may take over six months to nine months to completely rehabilitate. In other words, you, he said you'll, you'll find it will still, there'll still be some loss of movement on the face. How can I afford that? I'm a preacher. 
So I was driving down to the church. And my wife said to me, she said, you must preach. I said, I can't preach like this. She said, you have to preach. So I'm driving down. And suddenly the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, slap yourself. <laughs> I don't recommend you try that. I don't recommend you try that. I'm telling you what the Spirit of God told me. So I said, devil, I'm driving. I'm driving to the church. I said, devil, in the name of Jesus, bells palsy, galls palsy, whatever palsy you call this, I said, out in Jesus' name. That was a bit hard. But you get the picture. I went to church that day. I preached. While I was preaching, my whole mouth was numb. I, I wasn't pronouncing my words properly. Yeah. By the end of the service, I was healed. Hallelujah. Yes. Another lady in our church had Bell's palsy. Not so long after that. And she said, but pastor, I remembered your testimony. She said, the doctor said the same thing. Six months. She said, I refuse. Within two weeks, she was healed. Hallelujah. You are redeemed from sickness. You are redeemed from the curse of spiritual death. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we are eternal beings. We are going somewhere. Are you listening to me? When you die, you don't have to be afraid. Where am I going to? Holiday Inn? The Hilton? No. You're going to go to the presence of God. How do you know that? Because you're a child of God. You're a son of God. You're born again. You have the name of God. Yes. You're going somewhere. Yes. And that somewhere is not the lack of the presence of God, but it is in the bosom of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You remember the beggar, he went to the bosom of whom? Of, Laz of, of Abraham. That's where we're going. Hallelujah. Now listen, turn to quickly to Revelation. Is that okay? Give me 10 minutes and I'll close up. Is that okay? For the people that are going to the track. May the Lord have mercy on you. <laughs> no, no, I'm not against that, really. I'm not. Please, if you are going, go and enjoy it. Hallelujah. But you've got to get, get the Word of God. Amen. The Lord said to me when I started off preaching, He said to me, He says, don't apologize for the Word. He says, if you apologize for the word and you're scared and fearful of man, I cannot use you. Yes. So I made up my mind, who I, who, who, whomever I offend, for whatever reason, but if it's for the word's sake, yes. I cannot make any apology. That's right. I've got to preach what God asked me to preach. Yes. And I have to give you the word of God. I remember growing up, my granny would catch us and she would shove down our throats castor oil. <laughs> and we didn't like castor oil. And they would hold the nose. And then they would shove down the castor oil. And after that, it came an orange or sugar with it. But I tell you, brother, it was bad, but it was good. And the Word of God is like that. Sometimes the flesh wants to do something else. But I tell you what, if you train it to get God's Word, it will bring you the results. Amen. Now the Bible says in Revelation 12 verse 11, read 1, 2, 3, go. And they overcame him. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll wait for you. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Hallelujah. Church is good, man. You know, I can preach to you the whole day today. I'm telling you. What do you think about that? You're saying amen. You say, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I can find someone to listen to me the whole day, I'll preach the whole day, I tell you. Yes. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, listen. This is what the Word of God says. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Do you know how you are to overcome in the affairs of life? You have to overcome the same way. Yes. You have to know what the blood of the Lamb did for you. You have to know what the Word of God has done for you. 
And it doesn't stop there. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Ooh. It is not the interpretation of someone else. It is not a message by someone else. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Brothers and sisters, you can only overcome the things of life by what you say. And you will get what you say. That's why I said the word of your testimony. It is important as a child of God how you speak. You have to speak life into dead situations. Why? Because you're another speaking spirit. Why? Because God said to you, have dominion. Oh, but you say, but pastor, Adam and Eve, forget about Adam and Eve. Remember Jesus. He came back, he restored everything and more that Adam lost. So now, he says, now, he says, have dominion. Have dominion, have rulership. Walk with authority, speak with authority, live with authority, act kingly. He says, have dominion in your affairs. Well, Lord, I'm sitting with this situation. Uh, I'm trusting you to change it. He says, great. He says, we can change it together. Are you willing to say what I say? And you turn around and say, Lord, what are you willing to say? He says, speak to the mountain. Mm -mm -mm. But Lord, me speak to the mountain. I've got to run to pastor. He says, speak to the mountain. Yes. Now, you see, you can only speak to the mountain if you know who you are. Yes. If you know your identity. Yes. So you stand up and say, in the name of Jesus. See, see, it does not matter what news you get. You can make news. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> it doesn't matter what news comes to us. You can be a newsmaker. How do you make news? By speaking to it. Then you go around and say, Hey, come and see. What? Look at what the Lord has done through me. Amen. Don't forget that. You're listening. Now it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Brothers and sisters, it is important how you speak. It is important what you speak. Now the Bible says have dominion. Come on. In other words, nothing you're facing, you cannot change. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I hope you're drinking that. So, the only way to overcome the devil, I said, is by the word of God. Now these are the things you must know. I'll give you quickly in five minutes and then we close the service. Number one, you must know the first one according to Revelation 12, 11, You must know that you have already overcome by the blood of the Lamb and that it is important to speak the word of God because that is your testimony. Hallelujah. You got that? Yes. So number one, you must know that you've already overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. You're not going to overcome. You're not going to overcome. You have overcome. That's your positional status. You have overcome. But now I've got to speak the word. Pastor, I don't know what to do. Oh yeah, you know what to do. I'm teaching you now. Because I do the same things I'm teaching you to teach. See, when I'm, not, when I'm not well and sickness, the one day I walked into a chemist, the flu started to, you know, like get a hold on me. And I started to sniff and sneeze and my throat felt bad. I walked with Mark in some place. I don't know where it was. We walked in and I said, in the name of Jesus, I refuse this thing. Immediately that thing left me. I said, Mark, I'm healed. Is a pastor? I said, I'm healed. I said, God just healed me. Can you see what the Word of God would do? Yes. Number two, according to Ephesians 1 verse 7, by the blood, you must know this, that by the blood of the Lamb, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, when you start to pray, don't, don't think about the sins you've committed. See, 
brother and sister, you there, Alan and his wife, because you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, it means every sinful act you've ever done from the time you were born to now, and present and future, everything's been forgiven. Hallelujah. Yes. Paul the Apostle, after killing so many Christians, stood up and said, I've wronged no man. So that is the righteousness consciousness you must have in your mind, that I'm the righteousness of God. People say, but you're a liar. <laughs> that was then. Now I'm a new creature. I know you was a drunkard. No! That's the old man. The new man now is another speaking, living spirit. And he's born again. And he preaches the word of God. And he speaks the word of God. And he prays with power. And he changes situations. If you want prayer, brother, call on me. I'll change things. That's what you should say. Someone comes up, your family comes up and say to you, Oh, you know, I need you to pray. Say, yeah, sure. You really want the answer. Because if I pray, boy, oh boy, you'll get the answer. Are you listening to me? Number three, you should know, according to 1 John 1, 7, you are cleansed from all sin. Number four, according to Romans 5 verse 9, that by the blood of Jesus, you are justified and made righteous. Just as if you've never sinned. Righteous by the blood of Jesus. That means when you stand before God, you are righteous. You stand before man, you are righteous. I said to my wife one day, I said, you know, I said, people like to label you and tag you. You see, if they label you and tag you, they can bag you. If they label you and tag you, they can bag you. Because you know why? People want to always tell you who you are. And I said to her one day, I said, if you put a lesser price tag on you, no one's going to lift that out and put a higher price tag. If you put $13.99, you think one of your friends is going to come by and say cents? No ways. Everyone wants to be better than the other. So they'll come pinch the tag and put their two ninety nine. So that means it's important how you think of yourself. It's important. See, Jesus said, He said, love others, what? You love yourself. As you love yourself. Now watch the second part. You've got to love yourself first before you transmit love to others. See, some of you can't get on with other people because you don't love yourself. You feel dirty and unfinished and unclean. That's what you feel. Because in the past, someone's treated you badly. So because of that, you're still living in Regret Alley. Yeah. You've got a door called Regret Alley. And that door, and that hut, isn't barely getting along the street. That's where you live. So that's where every day you come to church and do your affairs in life and you crawl back there. I'm asking you to check out of that place. Come out of there. Get a truck, hire a truck, load your furniture, and you get, out, you get out of regret hut, out of barely getting along the street. Drive away from there. Amen. Well, where must I go, Pastor? Go to the city on the hill called Zion. Hallelujah. Well, where is Zion? It's a place where God's people ought to be because yes. you are Zion. Amen. So what is Zion? It means nothing in my past ever condemns me. If I was a prostitute before the eyes of God, I'm now clean as the day I was born. Amen. If I was a drug addict and a drunkard, and if I did wrong, it does not matter. Today, I'm justified. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, if you don't, you have that, check out of there today. Make up your mind. Go home. You say, what? I, I have people around me. Shut yourself in the bathroom and say everything that happened in the past is now done away with. That's the old man. Now, look in the mirror and say, here is a new man. And I love this guy. <laughs> you think that's strange. But if you love yourself, you can love other people. If you can love yourself and appreciate yourself, you can extend yourself to other people. It's important. Oh, no. Uh, that's, uh, then you say, well, in my past, in the church I came from, they told me that's humility. I must sit right at the back, creep in the corner. Pastor says, come, get used. No, no, no. I like to be unnoticed. No, that is false humility. I said, that is false humility. 
It's not humility. Humility is the attitude of the heart. Yes. One time I bought shoes. I went to a shoe store and I bought shoes. And I bought the ugliest shoes on the shoe rack. It was called hush puppies. It was grasshoppers. And it was suede. And I bought that. And I thought this, I just got saved. I went to church. I wore a suffering suit. <laughs> or, or what do you call that? And I wore that. But boy, did I hate those shoes. But I wore it to church. And I said, Lord, I said, I want to please. Because I was sincere, see. I was just a Hindu, and I just got saved. And I did it sincerely. I wanted to please God. And I thought, well, if I look humble, It's a tr I said, if I look humble, I said, I'll be pleasing in the eyes of God. So I went to church, and I hated those shoes. <laughs> I looked at it. It looked sick. Yeah. And it was brown. It was like those shoes in the farm. They wear the sock with the comb in there. It was a bad shoe. It was a bad shoe. So the Lord spoke to me, and this is what he said to me. I was very fortunate. From the time I was saved, young... God would speak to me and I would hear the voice of God. Well, very, very, that was the first thing that happened to me when I was full of the Holy Ghost. I heard the voice of God. Yeah. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, he said, the humility is not on the outside, it's on the heart. Yeah. And I caught it by revelation. From that day, it's gone 20 years since, I know now humility is on the inside. So don't act humble on the outside. Okay? I'll leave it like that. What did I say? Number five, Hebrews 13, 12. I'm sanctified and made a saint. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. According to Hebrews 13, 12, you are a saint. So if your husband shouts at you now, if your wife shouts at you and says, you dirty old stinking thing, say, I'm a saint. <laughs> Amen. That's what the Word of God says. I'm a saint. Amen. You are a saint. Oh, you're feeling so bad now to say that. That's what the Bible says. Number six, two more. Now, one more and I'll close. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You see, you've got to be walking sometimes. And when the pressure's on and when the different things are hitting you, you've got to say, inside of me dwells the Spirit of God. Lord, thank you that you are with me. You can never leave me, no, neither would you forsake me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When I pray, all my prayers will be answered in Jesus' name. Last one. Are you writing all of this down? Yes. Number seven. 1 Peter 2.24 By his stripes and the blood I am made whole. That's going to be the word of your testimony. That means as you walk, you live and operate in life, you know what happens? You've got to keep on speaking the word of God. And Revelations 12, 11 says, And they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of your testimony. Now, this is how you'll overcome. By the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of my testimony. Now I want you to stand up. Hallelujah. You've been good. Amen. I said, you've been good. Amen. I said, you've been good. Amen. You got the word now. Amen. Now you can go and hear tire screech. It's okay. <laughs> You'll be safe. You got, the, you, you got the word. Say, I will hide the word, hide the word. in my heart. Uh -huh. It will change me. It will transform me. Hallelujah. Say, I need the word. Say, I need the grace of God. I have the grace of God. I have the power of God. The power of God. In, the of in the name of Jesus. When I get back home, I get back home I'm another speaking spirit. I'm another speaking spirit. So, I'll so I'll prophesy over my home, over my, home, over my, children, over my children, over my circumstances, over my, circumstances, over my, situations. Over my situations. I will change things. I will change things. I'm, full of love. I'm full of love. People love me. They find me attractive. They find me attractive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is not for the married people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, in me, in me lives, lives the, power of God. the 
Say, I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Say, I'm cleansed by the Lamb of God. Say, when I go through this week, I will have power to change my environment. Say, I'm an atmosphere changer. Say, nothing can get me down. I will not be depressed. I refuse to be depressed. I'm more than an overcomer. Say, by the Lamb of God, I will overcome. So I expect success. I expect favor. I speak life over me. In the name of Jesus, you foul demonic spirits that seek to oppress me. Don't you know who I am? In the name of Jesus, I tell you, get out of my life. Get out of my environment. I'm full of the mercy of God. I'm full of the power of God. I'm full of the love of God. In the name of Jesus. Say, no sickness, no disease can come to me because I'm the righteousness of God. Tell someone next door, say, look at me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Say, look at me. Say, I'm full of the glory of God. I'm sorry, I, you know. Listen, come here, Louise. Come here, come here. There's such an anointing on me 